Hi, and welcome to the Spooky Owls. My name is Saunderson, and today we're talking to one of our contributors, Terry Sherwood, uh, who's a Canadian uh, British horror fan who's been writing for us for a number of years. How are you, Terry? I am wonderful right now, considering the state of the world. So how are you coping in lockdown? You're in uh, you're in Calgary, Alberta. What, what what's what's lockdown mean for people there? Lockdown lockdown means for me. I am I am very lucky. I'm I'm in an essential service, so I'm doing uh, full bore working, and uh, so is my wife uh, as well. So uh, it's sort of business as usual, but uh, you just can't go anywhere. So no. there's nothing much open. So what are you doing to keep yourself busy? Are you uh, watching a lot of horror films? Absolutely. Um, I have been, recently I've been trying to go through the Amicus catalog completely. Okay. Just last night I, I got through, uh, I hadn't seen, believe it or not, I hadn't seen Asylum. Okay. Uh, and I got to watch that. And I had not ever seen, I believe it was called uh, Beyond the Grave, one of the yeah. first ones. Yeah, yeah. It's funny when you think you may well have seen some of these films because you 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 see the pictures so often, and I feel that myself when you see the pictures of these Amicus films and you see all the little bits, you know, because they're you know portmanteaus. You think you've seen it, but then you realise you haven't. So I'm I'm sure I'm like you. I think I've missed a few of them. So how was Asylum for you? Um, actually, I truthfully I got halfway through it and everything, and because of my uh, my work, I was a little bit tired and I felt I wasn't giving it the attention it deserved. So I'm going to pick up the last half hour. But what I saw was uh, was really interesting. I remember seeing a black and white photo of, uh, I believe there's the sequence when uh, the hand comes out of the freezer. Mm. And I remember seeing that on the poster uh, in uh, Famous Monsters of Filmland. And I had never seen the film before. Um, yeah, I'm just... Uh, actually amazed by some of the uh, the inventiveness that went on uh, during some of those uh, anthology films uh, yeah. that I'm some of them I'm seeing for the first time yeah. you, you're in Canada so it's sort of a I don't know if I'm right to say you sort of a halfway between the culture of Britain and America the United States what, what was it like when you were growing up uh, uh, you, you grew up in Ottawa in the, in the capital what was it like uh, watching horror back in those days you literally it was like the old days. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of the older people would know that it was in the pre-internet. Uh, so when you wanted to see a picture, you were you had to look it up in the newspaper, you know, or you'd see those uh, really cool, glossy, often over-the-top uh, ads in the in the newspaper, and you'd go down and uh, you have to stand in line. Some of the films I wanted to see, you didn't have to stand in line. <laughs> you just walk in. Um, you can see them in afternoon matinees. Uh, as far as getting news, non-existent. You had to basically look at magazines, famous monsters of filmland. So, how old were you when you first started going to see films in the cinema? What, what years are we talking here? Oh, uh, I think in the late sixties. I remember a non-horror film that my father, uh, that my father took me to uh, Billy Budd, which yeah. I saw in the theater, Terence Stamp. That was one of my earliest memories. Uh, another one, uh, the re-release. It's got to be the re-release of Ben Hur. Yeah, no, it would have been. Yeah. What about horror films though? Were you able to get in there? Were you able to sneak into some of these? I don't know what the rating system's like in Canada, but I imagine it would have meant that you'd have had to sneak in if you could even get into these places. No, actually, we we didn't. You'd actually uh, you could walk in. Um, there was a theater in 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 my city called the Rialto Theatre. And what you would do is you could pay 35 cents and see three films. Uh, you'd see things like The Mole People, uh, The House That Drip Blood would yep. show up there. Uh, some of the early uh, European stuff like Hercules and Haunted World, uh, some of the sword and sorcerer ones. They'd have like a, a theme of uh, Poe films or... Uh, vampire films and uh, you know for 35 cents you, you you'd sit there and watch these things and eat this horrid popcorn it was you'd have a year's supply of salt <laughs> in it and uh, uh yeah that was that was my first experience with it what was the first can you remember what the first hammer film you saw first hammer horror absolutely uh prince of darkness i saw in the Very theater good. you saw and that. There was a there was a thing um, 
you got a promotion. I don't know if it was in the UK or not. You got a promotion. Uh, if it was double billed with Plague of the Zombies. And okay. uh, you got a promotion with Vampire Fangs for the guys and Zombie Eyes for the girls. And it was these little glasses that you could put on. Um, I had got, got there and they were all out of the fangs and they wouldn't give me zombie eyes. Uh, and I remember walking in, sitting down, and the first thing I saw was the Mary, um, I believe it was uh, the staking, actually. Um, Mary Shelley. Uh, oh, yeah, Bob, Barbara, she- Barbara Shelley. Well, I'm thinking Mary Shelley. I'm thinking Frankenstein. Yeah, yes. Barbara Shelley staking scene was the first one I ever saw. Because you yeah, could walk Andrew in in the middle of it. Yeah. yeah. And well, it was the, like. It's a good start. Yeah. It's a good start uh, for watching. And you must have watched. I mean, if you're if you're watching them back in those days, you must have been pretty much at the height of uh, when Hammer was still making their films, and there was still a, a good a good decade to go before they uh, sort of uh, you know bled off into the night. Absolutely, I could say uh, I have seen Risen from the Grave about six times in the theater when it first came out. Well, there you go. <laughs> you must have loved it. So, what was it about the Hammer horror films that you enjoyed? This is a combination of things. Uh, I, Christopher Lee, of course, when we were talking about, if you're talking about the Dracula films, um, Peter Cushing's portrayal of, of, of the Baron and various aspects of it. Uh, the only one I, only Frankenstein picture I saw in the theater was uh, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. Uh, okay. I missed, I had missed Evil. I uh, had to see that on television and I never had a chance to see Curse. On, okay. on, on the theater. Um, Hammer got me with the sets, with the quality of, of, of the stories. Uh, the music was what uh, also grabbed me. And uh, just there was a certain danger to it at the time that I didn't realize what was happening because you were getting a lot of uh, different horror aspects from North America with the pole pictures and everything. But then you saw this blood, the score, and uh, the other things that Hammer started to get into <laughs> later yeah. on. Yes, when you were probably getting when older. Were young, and, yeah. When you were a young fellow and you like to see. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. So you were, you, were, you, were you watching much Universal Horror? I imagine that would have been on the television maybe at that time. The yeah. old Universal Horror films with Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, etc. Yes, yes, I did. Um, it took me a while to get into the canon of those, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I wasn't around when Shock Theater, Shock Theater in the States, uh, ran during the early 50s. And uh, they did edited versions of the Universal Horrors, which uh, we didn't get uh, because it was the States and you didn't have cable vision or, or anything else. I got deeper into it when they finally did a series, uh, series of it on, uh, on a network. And... Yes, I watched them all, and I had, eventually they were my first purchases for uh, DVD, along yeah. with a couple of hats. Yeah. So, what were you? Uh, I'll give you the obligatory. What are your favorite? What What is your favorite Universal horror film? Oh, there's two. Um, if I got to pick, have to pick one. Uh, the Black Cat. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a yeah. Good choice. Yeah, yeah, that's got lots the of underlying uh, underlying uh, sadism in it, and uh, things that are not said that you could probably be surprised in this day and age they were actually making back then. So that's yeah, a good one. The Raven. Yeah, the Raven the Raven. Too. Yes, you know uh, the old Boris Karloff uh, and and Lugosi doing you know his that's right Hermar. You want me to uh, flail the skin off to Hermar? Slowly, <laughs> yeah, and all and yeah. sort of necrophilia type things, and a bit of incest, and all sorts of horrible things in that film. So, and what's so? Are they the two you're talking about? You say the Black Cat and the Raven. Yeah. What about okay? What about Hammer then? What What was your What, were, what were your favorite Hammer films? Oh, I going with the Frankenstein series. Uh, I'm going to pick Evil of Frankenstein. Okay. Uh, a lot of people. Uh, seemed to put that down uh, simply, simply because it was very well connected with the Universal Monster and the story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kiwi Kingston yeah. in that with his uh, sort of blockhead. So the yeah. uh, I, I love the flow of the film. 
was it was interesting for me. Uh, the little sequence when he goes and tells the story, you know, one night hands I created. And they go into the backstory. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the characters that were in that. Um, Frankenstein must be destroyed. Yeah. Uh, was, that was actually the, that was actually the first Frankenstein I saw. Uh, Frankenstein of Hammer, I saw. I saw that one late night. Or I didn't. I taped it on the video at like two thirty in the morning or something like that. But that's a. But yeah, tell us about that. That was very. Uh, that was very subversive, uh, for me at the time. I did not see the, uh, the restored version of it till later on. Which, what's, the what, what's the restored version mean? The restored version had uh, the assault scene. Uh, but Peter Cushing and Valerie Carlson shot, or Veronica did that, Carlson did, did shot. That, was, was, it re, was it removed, the restored yes. version, or was it, it was removed? That's good, okay. It yeah. was removed in the North American version, and for good reason. Yeah. Um, I, I recently saw a documentary on it, uh, on the Warner years, and uh, I totally agree with what it should have been put. It should not have been put in. Yeah, it's well, just you, you wrote that article for us, and we'll put that in the, uh, the description about the the Hammer War Warner years, so uh, Warner Brothers years, so people could read what you've written about that. So, yeah. So you've you've also you've written a book uh, called Screen and Screen Again. Obviously, uh, you've uh, used the the Gordon Hessler uh, Scream and Screen Again as a as as the name for that. What, what's that book about? That that was about uh, some of my experiences growing up in Canada. And how little different we are uh, from the states, and from and from the UK in terms of uh, how we used to do, uh, how one acquired uh, to do uh, horror, and uh, how one would uh, come in contact with it uh, through magazines. A little bit of my life experience uh, growing up in a city, uh, what it's like going to a, a show, what it's like uh, slightly being ignored by people, thinking that you're uh, kind of different going to these films. Uh, I suppose that could be uh, universal uh, throughout. Um, it also has some reviews in it. Uh, I think what I've done is I've, I've taken some of the pictures that I've watched and all the pictures that I, that I review, I watch. I don't do summaries or I don't uh, go to other people's sites and take what they take and, and, and change them. Uh, I try to examine it from an actor's point of view, from a writer's point of view. Uh, how they fit to the continuity of film, how well structured they are, but I also don't reveal the endings. I try yeah. not to reveal the endings. That's the uh, fun I like part. to get people going through these things. So it's essentially a memoir of someone growing up in loving horror, and how that meant, what that meant to your life. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I think it's something that was unknowingly. Uh, often I will find that uh, you don't realize what a constant string of say something like uh, a love of horror or the horror fiction is in your life. And then you may disappear from it, say for uh, a couple of years or a few months, or it may go out of your mind for other things. And then all of a sudden you look back and go, my goodness, I've been going to these movies since I was 10, <laughs> you know, and now you're, I'm in my later years, I like to say in a nice way. And uh, you realize you have a bit of a history. Yeah, and I think as when often when you say some of the films you mentioned, I like I haven't I haven't seen them in thirty years, so you know it just shows it doesn't matter where you are, whether in Britain, Australia, Canada, America, or anywhere you are, we've all got very similar stories to tell. So yes. anyway, it's, it's been lovely talking to you, Terry. Uh, maybe when we'll get back uh, at some stage and maybe review uh, some of the films that you were talking about, and uh, and maybe uh, have a bit more of a chat about uh, some of the Universal horrors and hammers that you watched. So you take See care, you. and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chat later. See ya. Bye-bye. Be safe.